morning. Uh, we will quickly go through our epsilon NTU method. Most of us again are comfortable with this topic, so we are not going to spend uh, too much time or too much into the details of it, but some physical aspects are going to be given nevertheless. Uh, first and foremost, see we have LMTD and epsilon NTU method. Why do we have these two methods? Well, first L LMTD method I am sure Sir Professor Prabhu has told is essentially a sizing method, where I want to get the dimensions. Meaning, if I know the heat load, which heat exchanger or what is the size of the heat exchanger, which is going to give me this performance or this Q or heat transfer ability. Okay. So, it is what we call as a sizing problem. So, when I have temperatures known, mass flow rates known or in other words, if I have the heat load known, one uh, one fluid inlet outlet temperature mass flow rate, another fluid inlet or exit temperature whatever it is, I will know this so called LMTD by some energy balance. Then I will know my overall heat transfer coefficient because I know H of each of these fluids and if I know the conduction resistance, I can get U. Once I get U, I know LMTD, I know the Q, I can apply this Q is equal to U A LMTD and I can get the uh, area or uh, which is the size of the heat exchanger. So, knowing a diameter, I can get the length or knowing the length, I can get the diameter and appropriately I can size, I can give a physical size to the heat exchanger. Well, now in real life do we know all these things? Do we know three temperatures that is cold fluid inlet, hot fluid inlet, cold fluid exit or hot fluid exit. So, I need to know three of these four to be able to apply energy balance, because what is energy balance? Energy balance essentially is, we are going to say heat loss by hot fluid is equal to m dot h C p h T h i minus T h o. Okay. So, if I just take a simple counter flow heat exchanger T, o, T with respect to x and this is hot fluid T H O T C I T C O here T H I here. So, what am I saying? I need to know 3 out of these 4 temperature T H I T H O T C I T C O. So, if I know any 3 by energy balance, I can get m dot C C P C T C O minus T C I. So, knowing 3, I can get the fourth one. Knowing any of these two co combination, either this one or this one, I can get the heat load. So, I know knowing all 3, I know the fourth one, knowing 3 temperatures get Q get fourth temperature and then get area is equal to Q by U times delta T log mu. So, this is the standard procedure that we have followed, very nice, but in real life we most occasions we will know only this and this temperature. We will know the mass flow rate m dot h, we will know the properties hopefully depending on the working fluid we know mass flow rate m dot h m dot c we know t h i t c i because these are under our control so for example oil is coming out from a lubricating oil from some application is coming out you know the exit temperature from that application so that is the inlet to the heat exchanger okay so it is being cooled by if you are in a ship it has to be cooled by sea water so you know the sea water inlet temperature apart from that i don't know anything okay so, for me to use this delta T log mean approach is going to be very, very difficult. You can do it, okay. we are not saying you cannot do it, but it will be an iterative approach. It will not be like you know how you have taught, how you have done in class, we cannot do it so simply. So, what do we do? Therefore, we say when I am going, when I do not know 3 out of the 4 temperatures my problem essentially is intractable by this method. 
Okay, so what what do I do? I don't solve the problem. That's not an option. So we go to what we call as this so-called epsilon NTU method. What is okay? How and how, means why did people come up with this epsilon NTU method? Or how did somebody know that this method is going to be useful for solving heat exchange uh, related problems? What is this epsilon? What is this NTU? How did they come up? Well, this has not come from you know magic or something this has come from very very fundamental concept what is this epsilon we will see ntu we will see and this ratio cr that we are going to see before that i want to tell you one one other thing which uh, 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 i suddenly remembered if you are talking of a class a classroom type of problem you can use this kind of solution you know where you have everything known inlet exit temperatures are known you can do uh, this closed form solution like this, but in real life if you are trying to do in application or if you are in a design environment where you want to calculate the length accurately, where you will want to take the property variation etcetera, what is typically done is you split the, uh, the you march in every incremental length. So, you choose a particular length d x, you uh, let me let me just put it. Professor Prabhu says we will tell this at the end after we have finished both epsilon and NTU method. It is correct because in, it can be valid for both methods. So, it is not specific to LMTD approach. Anyway, so let us get back to this epsilon NTU method. So, what is this epsilon? What is this NTU? What is this specific heat ratio? And how did somebody know that this is going to give me some kind of a dimension of heat exchanger? Meaning, after you see it, it becomes obvious, but how? Well, it has come from a very, very fundamental thing by K's and London. So, this is done mainly to avoid iterations. Okay. So, what is known is the type and size of a heat exchanger and whether I am going to be able to achieve this particular performance is what is going to be understood by this method. So, it is the inlet temperature of the two fluids are known mass flow rate specific heats type and size of the heat exchanger of course is known our idea therefore is to predict the outlet of uh, outlet temperature of the hot and float, fold, uh, cold fluid also to see whether this thing is going to satisfy our application okay this problem of course can be solved by lmtd but it is going to be a iterative approach so what do we do so we define two or three quantities and then we will proceed further with the derivation. So, first quantity of interest is this so called effectiveness. What is this effectiveness? It is actual heat transfer rate that is what you calculate. So, let me take a counter flow heat exchanger just for simplicity. I will put this diagram P is a function of x. T h i T H O, T C I, T C O, arrows have, okay, this is the direction of flow. I know T H I and T C I, M dot H, C P H, M dot C, C P C. Okay. I know the area or the size this is known. Okay. So, what are we saying? We are going to say that there is some heat transfer application for which this heat exchanger is there. That application basically will tell you that means, you know the heat load also. Is this going to work and how good is it? Is it a very good heat exchanger or a very bad heat exchanger? So, first definition the easiest ones we will take m dot C p of cold you calculate m dot C p of hot fluid we will calculate. This quantity we are calling as capital C c capital C h. Specific heat this is now basically the specific means any specific quantity specific enthalpy specific internal energy would be mass basis per unit mass. This is basically are multiplied by the mass flow rate. So, this is the actual heat capacity. So, that is this defined here already. So, we are going to stick with those definitions. This C is C min by C max. 
what is C min by C max? I have calculated uh, m dot C p for hot fluid, m dot C p for cold fluid, one of them is going to be smaller than the other. So, take the smaller one divided by the larger of the two, that is called as a C or certain textbooks will call this as C r, C or cap C r will be nothing but C min capital C min by capital C max. So, this is one quantity we define. Okay. What is this? What is this C min C max? It is not any magic again, it is just temperature difference ratio. How did I get that? Q is equal to C h capital C h this is, I hope the capitals are clear, T h inlet minus T h outlet heat loss by hot fluid is correct. This is m dot C p, this is another m dot C p. Therefore, let us say C c by C h, let us m dot C p cold divided by m dot C p hot it is equal to T H I minus T H O divided by T C O minus T C I. Right. So, in case C C is smaller than C H, this is the definition. In case C H is smaller than C H, the reciprocal is the definition. But whatever it is, we need to appreciate that this is just the temperature difference ratio. Okay, that is the first thing. Second definition. Second definition that we have is this so called NTU. We have seen this NTU in when we uh, looked at internal flow constant wall temperature case. We remember we came up with this delta T local divided by delta T inlet is equal to E x p minus H p x by m dot C p, we came up with this. This is nothing but your surface area and we came up with this very uh, useful uh, term and we call this as NTU. Remember the diagram, I am just putting this again for those who might have forgotten. This is the profile, correct constant wall temperature and this is your fluid temperature which is increasing T surface T x. Okay. Now, this derivation when we did, we did it for what? For a pipe where a fluid was flowing in and the inside wall temperature was at T s and the fluid temperature varied with respect to the length direction. Well, I can do the same derivation when I have not just u, uh, sorry, not just h at the inlet, this h was h at inlet, uh, h on the convective heat transfer coefficient for the fluid on the inside, which is what we are doing. Now, I can do the same thing for the same fluid which is flowing here. If I am given this surface temperature T s o, which is what we measure many times this is T s i and there is a conduction resistance here and this is T m of x. Heat transfer rate is the same. right? So, there I could write Q is equal to H a s T s minus T m local. Remember we wrote this and that is how this H a s came into the problem. Now, I can write this as Q is equal to instead of H a s I will define he overall heat transfer coefficient times A, which is nothing but 1 over summation of all the thermal resistance, where R thermal is 1 by H i A i internal flow convective resistance plus log R out by R in divided by 2 pi L k. I can do this per unit length, so on and so forth. I am not going into the details. So, Essentially, this H A S, which was T 
T s minus T m x divided by R convection can now be replaced by T T s out minus T m x divided by summation of R correct summation of R thermal which is these two or that is equivalent of saying u times a T s o minus T m x correct. So, if I do this my whole derivation I can do and still say delta T x which is nothing but T s out I am the driving temperature difference for this resistance is T s out minus T m local divided by T s out minus T m inlet is equal to exponential decay of minus u times P x divided by m dot C p that is all. So, this is u a this is your surface area local till that location from inlet to that location. So, u a by m dot C p and this quantity we call there without going into so much detail h a by m dot C p we decided to call this as n t u remember our we call that quantity as n t u and that n t u is not come from anywhere it is just come from this concept of reciprocal of thermal resistance. So, I can write u a s by m dot C p is nothing but n t u number of transfer units what is this transfer units are there some 15 units no what we are saying is this is a representation of the physical size of the heat exchanger. This are related to the flow which is given to us. This is a again a flow related quantity. This quantity is a size related quantity. Size get em, gets embedded in this A term. So, larger the number of transfer unit, larger the NTU, larger is the dimension or larger is the dimension, larger is the NTU. I will just quickly go to this slide in internal flow which has this concept h a s by m dot c p this is dimensionless parameter. Now, instead of h a s I am calling u a s this h a s was what 1 over convective resistance. So, in fact it is n t u is nothing in, in when we did internal flows we defined n t u as h a s by m dot c p this h a s was 1 over convective resistance. So, it is m dot C p 1 over m dot C p times 1 over r convection. Now, we are saying this n t u is u a s by m dot C p which is nothing but 1 m dot C p r total okay. and we for recap uh, for doing a recap I am going to say this thing again n t u of 5 indicates the limit has been reached for heat transfer. That means what? If I fix this inlet temperature and keep changing my surface area here and keep changing the surface area, H is fixed, M dot is fixed, C p is fixed, I will get a different set of exit temperatures. That exit temperature increases with increase in length because the diameter is fixed, H, M dot, C p are fixed. As my length increases, N dot N T u increases, exit temperature increases. What are we saying? N T u of 5 gives me exit temperature of 99.5, N T u of 10 is giving me exit temperature of 100. So, la, it is hardly again we are coming back to the driving temperature difference decreases with further and further increase in length in this case. So, same thing here we are saying N T u is a representation of the dimension. And again I am going to show you this is nothing but the ratio of temperature differences. What is that? How is that going to come? We will see in a minute. So, this N T u has been defined like this. Q again let me say is U A S delta T log mean L M T D. This Q is also equal to M dot C P. Let us say cold fluid is a, is a uh, minimum specific heat fluid. So, T c O minus T c I. So, dimensionally this U a s by m dot C p 
is nothing but T C O minus T C I by delta T log mean. This has units of temperature, this has units of temperature, N T u is a dimensionless quantity, but again it is directly related to the temperature differences. Okay. So, this also is a temperature difference ratio. Wow. So, C r or C is a temperature difference ratio, N T u is also a temperature difference ratio very nice. So, what are we, where are we going from here? One last thing that we have to define and this is the more difficult thing is the so called effectiveness. Once we define this, there is hardly anything more to be done. Effectiveness is defined as actual heat transfer rate divided by maximum heat transfer rate. Actual everybody can write heat load m dot C p cold times T c o minus T c i divided by q max or this is m dot C p h T h i minus T h o by q max. What is this q max? This is what we do not know and this is where most questions occur. Let us take, let us try to understand q max. Q max refers to the maximum possible heat transfer that could occur. When, when can this heat transfer be maximum? Heat transfer can be maximum when my length tends to infinity. Okay. So, if my length were infinite, if my heat exchanger was infinitely long, then I am going to have maximum heat transfer. Okay. So, what is that? Parallel flow or counter flow, what is it going to give me? If I take for example, parallel flow I am going to do, do here. After a particular point in parallel flow, we can very easily see that the driving temperature difference is going to be almost equal to 0. Right? Whereas, in counter flow if I see, let us take this purposely I have to draw it like this big and with a different slope T h i T h o T c i T c o temperature versus x. M dot max is given by, we are going to say the formula first and then we will say why that is the correct way of writing. C min times T h i minus T c i. This is all of us do this, all of us know this also. We want to say why this is true. Okay. So, in the limiting condition, maximum heat transfer is going to be given by the maximum temperature difference that is possible in this device. It cannot be this minus this, it cannot be this minus this, it has to be the maximum temperature difference. Now, maximum temperature difference times some m dot times C p. What is that m dot times C p? Why is it C minimum? That is what we will see. Now, think of this fluid here, I will use the same diagram. Think of this fluid, which fluid hot or cold has a smaller heat capacity? How do we know that? We can get that by the slope of this curve. How? The slope is what? m dot C p is essentially q divided by the delta t, whatever hot or cold fluid is q divided by delta t. So, delta T is large, Q is fixed, hot fluid exchange heats with cold fluid, so this is going to be fixed. So, if my m dot C p is small, delta T has to be large, m dot C p is small, delta T has to be large, that means in this case, this is the lower m dot C p, because I have drawn this with a larger slope, larger temperature change. This one is going to be a smaller, that means lower, uh, sorry, higher m dot C p or a lower temperature drop. Okay. Then why should C min come here? Why not C max? Well, it is because this fluid, if length were infinite, this fluid eventually 
the exit temperature of the cold fluid because it is having a lower m dot C p lower heat capacity is going to reach somewhere at infinite length asymptotically it will reach the h i correct. Why not, why not the higher m dot C p fluid we will argue for that also T h i it started off if length went to infinite okay, this thing is never going to be able to reach this T c i. Okay, because of its inherent capability that it, it cannot take that much of temperature, uh, temperature difference, because it has a larger m dot C p associated with it. Okay. So, the colder fluid will asymptotically or in the limiting condition reach T h i. So, this C min essentially is going to be the one which controls the maximum heat transfer. So, the cold fluid in the limiting condition will undergo a temperature difference of T h i minus T c i, where T h i was the exit temperature. T c o became equal to T h i in the limit of L tending to infinity, that is the maximum heat transfer. Now, just for clarification, I will do the other thing also, because our students will have infinite confusion on this. So, let us say my m dot C p of hot is smaller than m dot C p of cold. Still my formula for q max will come out to be the same C min T h i minus T, T c i, it will come out to be the same, you will see that. So, hot fluid is going to show a larger temperature change, let us say this is the cold fluid T c i. T c o hot fluid is showing a very large temperature change T h i this is T this is x. What am I saying? This will in the limit this is actually quite easy to understand now. In the limit this fluid will eventually reach the inlet temperature of the cold fluid. I do not have to even uh, explain this too much. Just by looking at the diagram, if I increase the length, the inlet temperature is there, quickly the hot fluid will reach the exit temperature of the cold fluid in the limiting case. So, this T h o will become equal to T c i, therefore, Q max will therefore, be m dot C p of hot times T h i minus T h o which in turn is T, T c i. So, whatever be it, whichever be the situation, my Q max is nothing but C min, because that fluid because of its smaller heat capacity can take in larger temperature change. So, T h i minus T c i. Now, I will just write epsilon and then we will close for T is Q by Q max. Again, I am going to show you this is a temperature difference ratio. If I write this as let us say hot fluid, because we have this diagram here m dot C p hot T h i minus T h o divided by m dot C p hot T h i minus T c i, this cancels off I am left with a temperature difference ratio. So, effectiveness N T u and C r or C are all delta T something by another delta T. So, temperature difference ratios. Now, we will understand this. So, I have three non dimensional numbers just bear with me for two minutes. Dimensional analysis taught in fluid mechanics tells me I have three non dimensional numbers which are all related to the same quantity some temperatures one of them has to be a function of two others. So, I can have C r as a function of epsilon n t u, I can have epsilon as a function of C r and n t u, I can have n t u as a function of C r and uh, epsilon. C r is known to us because that is a flow m dot and C p. So, that we will not take as an unknown quantity that is a known quantity. So, depending on my problem situation whether n t u is known or epsilon is known, I can in general 
write the following. I can in general write epsilon is a function of n t u and c r or n t u is a function of epsilon and c r. Why I could write that? Because these non dimensional numbers, we are not giving them any special name, these are all non dimensional quantities only. These non dimensional quantities are all functions of temperature difference ratios only, nothing else. And since that is the case, by our logic that we have learnt in dimensional analysis, one of them is going to be a function of the other two. I can even write for sake of completeness, C r is a function of epsilon n t u, but we will not find that useful, because C r is something that we know already. Okay. So, this we will not see, we will see only these two cases. Okay. From now, I will go very fast, because it is all things that we have studied. This explanation sometimes students get uh, bold, so we have to spend some time on it. We will take questions for about 5 minutes and then quickly uh, get started. Okay. Any questions? NIT Trichy? Sir, uh, for uh, condensation, we are saying that the temperature of the uh, steam remains constant. constant. So, for example, when we are allowing a very low temperature cold fluid, so it will take the latent heat as well as the sensible heat. When it takes the sensible heat, the temperature of that horizontal line will decline. But why we are saying it is okay. horizontal? The same case for boiler. Okay, okay, Professor. The question is, if I take a superheated vapor or subcooled liquid, then I will have some sensible portion, and I will have some, uh, uh, and I will have a portion in which my temperature is constant. For the sensible portion, you design the heat exchanger as if you are designing for single phase flow and then use uh, the delta T L M T D approach for constant temperature. So, basically the heat exchanger design will be subdivided into three parts, sensible, three parts subcooled, latent heat and the superheated portion. So, basically it will become three, three portions, that is what essentially we do in design of condensers or evaporators. In this part, the line is horizontal, that is oh. all. We never said that the line is horizontal all through. Any other question? Yes, sir. In example problem, uh, you have used the hydraulic diameter as D2 minus D1. Yeah. But in a double pipe heat exchanger, yeah. the, double, uh, the hydraulic diameter is different for uh, heat transfer cases and pressure drop measurement. So, uh, which hydraulic diameter we have to use? See. That is what I emphasized while solving the, the question asked is, we have something called for heat transfer application, we use one hydraulic diameter. For flow rate applications, I use another hydraulic diameter. See, there is no confusion here actually. See, how is Reynolds number defined? Reynolds number is defined as rho V d by mu. Velocity, I, it will come by velocity equal to m dot upon rho into area. Area is annular area, no confusion, I get velocity. But which diameter I should use? I should be using the hydraulic diameter. I should be using the hydraulic diameter which is d naught minus d i. But where is the heat transfer taking place? Where is the heat transfer taking place? It is taking place only on the outer wall. So, I have to take d naught as the hydraulic diameter for heat transfer and d naught minus d i for Reynolds number. But people Few people argue and say, no, for both of the things I will take D naught only. It is okay actually. D naught. D naught is not that. D naught is the outer wall. So, D naught, few people argue and say that D naught only I will take for both. Actually, it does not make much difference, but only thing is that Reynolds number will be slightly bloated. So, what if you have, if we are nitpicking and if you have to do things correctly for Reynolds number, I have to take hydraulic diameter which is 4 into wetted area upon perimeter and for heat transfer that is n u equal to h d by k d has to be d o outside diameter of, okay. of the inner tube of the inner tube yeah. in dq current uh, for heat transfer uh, he mentioned that d2 square minus d1 square by d1 for uh, pressure drop uh, uh, he used d2 minus d1 Please for heat transfer, ah. the outer side, for annular side, he used D2 minus 
d2 square minus d1 square by d1 for pressure drop he used d2 minus d1 no i don't think that is right see d2 squared minus d1 squared there is no question to get it at all okay so what is what is that we are saying is for fluid dynamics we are going to use the hydraulic diameter as d2 minus d1 Not d2 minus d1 sir yeah but for heat transfer we are taking the outer diameter of d1 that's all i am saying d1 plus thickness did we answer your question yeah please repeat your question for example uh, pressure drop estimation the hydraulic diameter is four times of hydraulic radius hydraulic radius is uh, cross uh, cross sectional area by uh, wetted perimeter four times so three. for annular flow four times pi by 4 yeah. d2 square minus pi by 4 d1 square yeah. d1 plus d2 uh, this case we will get d2 minus d1 correct okay other case What for heat transfer uh, uh, for heat transfer we will get uh, the same numerator but denominator is pi d1 so we'll get d2 square minus d1 square by d1 four times area by what what is the what is the numerator again please area same area he is saying four into what he is saying is four same into area. yeah d2 squared minus d1 squared upon pi into d1 into that's it d1 into l d1 yeah only d1 pi d1 that's all pi d1 acha this is what is given in kern wetted perimeter that is what is given in kern yeah in kern this is given yeah yeah yes sir yeah yeah people define like this people define like this but there i said there are two schools of thoughts there are one can take the hydraulic diameter like this also people take like this also but you can go back and check even if you take pi see basically what is happening where is the boundary layer where is the boundary layer growing the bond the thermal boundary layer is growing only on the outer wall so why should i take pi into d squared in pi by 4 into d squared minus d1 squared that has no meaning so what where is the boundary layer growing is what i should be taking so that is that is why i said there are two schools of thought one school of thought is what professor karn has given as dh equal to d2 squared minus d1 squared by d1 that is one school of thought but the other school of thought is what we have stated in our problem that is simply pi d d1 into l that's all is that okay okay sir over to you yeah okay, okay we will get we'll started get with start. so having defined uh, these three quantities epsilon ntu and as now it is just a matter of putting things together and coming up with a formulation so what are we saying we want to relate these three quantities so that we are able to get an uh, get a formulation which is based on these three non dimensional variables okay so in uh, broadly if you are going to write we'll say ntu is ua by c min uh, c min is this and effectiveness is given by the uh, function of c and ntu so this derivation essentially comes from fundamentals so q by q max is actual heat transfer rate by maximum heat transfer rate and that is the effectiveness so what i am doing now is just manipulation i am going to put all these things all this q q max everything i i told you in the beginning itself all these are ratios of temperature differences what i am doing i am writing this in this form so q is equal to effectiveness times q max which is nothing but effectiveness times c min thi minus tci definition of q max this q is nothing but what do i get u a by delta t log mean right u a by delta t log mean is used okay and i am going to substitute 
for these quantities T H i minus T C i. How did I get that? Let me just write this step, so that you do not get confused. Q is equal to U A delta T log mean. What is delta T log mean? U A times counter flow we are going to use T H i, T H o, T C i, T C o. So, T H i minus T C o minus T H o minus T C i divided by log of T H i minus T C o divided by T H o minus T C i. So, this is my L M T D business. So, what I do? q is equal to effectiveness c min t h i minus t c i. So, I am going to substitute now this relationship here okay, and substitute for t h i minus t c i. So, what, I, what do I get? So, this is going to be log, log part remains there it is. So, I am just going to take it to the other side is equal to u a t h i minus t h o can be replaced. So, if I go back to this whiteboard, t h i minus t h o I will club together, t c i minus t c o I will club together. So, this difference t h i minus t h o will be related to m dot h c t h plus t c o minus t c i will be m dot c c p c. That is all I am putting. So, once I put this, what is the what is the aim? We do not want any of these temperatures in picture. Okay. We want only this F A F A C R and N T U somewhere in picture. So, let us say I, I bring all these things together in form of C C and C H. This remains as it is the log term and C C by C H we keep carrying this all the time C C by C H plus 1. In this thing I have told I am taking that C min comes out to be the C C. Okay. C min is C C. If C min is not equal to C C, then I will use the appropriate the lower one for the division. Otherwise, it does not matter the way of doing is the same. So, Q is C C, T C out minus T C in, T H C H times T C in, T H in minus T H out. So, we have assumed in this derivation that the C min is this quantity. Okay. So, then it is just algebra, I am not spending time on this. This we will do some manipulation here, because I want to get these in terms of all the temperatures, so that I can write these as temperature difference ratios. So, if I all the steps have been given. So, I will right hand side remains as it is, this is T H i minus T C i plus T C i minus C C by C H blah blah blah. It comes out from here in terms of, so this looks like an N T U to you, this looks like a C R plus 1. Okay. So, we are going to have something like that and everything else here is going to be related to the other non dimensional parameter. So, I am going to substitute for all these using these two steps. Okay. So, this is a manipulation of this term okay. T H O minus T C O. So, that I am going to write in this way from here. Where, where did this come from? This came from energy balance. So, I want to eliminate T H O. So, I write it. What do I, why do I write it like this? I write it like this because T H I and T C I are the only known temperatures. Everything else is unknown. So, I do not like keeping all these in picture. So, I am writing T H O, T C O. I am going to write in terms of T H I first. So, that manipulation was for this and the other one will be having the T C i here. So, if I substitute all these and do the maths, I am just going to get some all the steps are there, please do it. Okay. We are not going to do this. I am going to get log of 1 minus 1 plus C C by C H epsilon C min by C C. Okay. That is going to be equal to U A S so on and so forth. So, rearrangement will give me this expression. This is what you see in the textbooks. Epsilon is a function of N T U times specific heat ratio. Now, this was derived for counter flow. You can have a family of such derivations for various other geometries. 
and all the textbooks that are there will have these formulae given. Okay. This formula and this formula are essentially the same. Let me just so this is NTU is an unknown effectiveness and CC are the parameters, uh, whereas there effectiveness was the unknown NTU and CC were the parameters. So, this and that are essentially one and the same you use what you want depending on what is known. So, if you know NTU and CC use this to get effectiveness, if you know the effectiveness which is possible you use the other formula to get the NTU. However, whatever be it these are essentially the same and these are tabulated in the form of graphs for us. Okay. So, this I will leave it to Professor Prabhu to quickly go through these and then there are there is one problem which I think we are not going to solve. Thank you. Thank you.